What's up Smart Homers? My name's Aaron. In a previous video, I showed you how easy it is to install Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi and get Zigbee and Z-Wave coordinators up and running. In this video, I'll show you how to add Zigbee and Z-Wave devices and I'll explain how devices and their entities show up in Home Assistant. As I showed in part one, it's super easy to add Zigbee and Z-Wave coordinators into Home Assistant. It's literally just plug in and they're automatically recognized. But how hard is it to add devices? The answer is that it really depends on the device itself, but for most devices, it's very straightforward. Just to note that for this guide, I'm gonna be using Zigbee Home Automation or ZHA and the Z-Wave JS integrations. I will not be covering how to use Decons, Zigbee to MQTT or Z-Wave JS to MQTT. Before we start, let me quickly try to explain how devices and their entities show up in Home Assistant. In Home Assistant, there are two object types that you need to know about when you are adding devices. I don't know if object's the right word because I'm not really a software engineer or programmer or anything like that, but that's the word I'm going to use. The first type is called a device. This is a physical device that you are connecting to Home Assistant. The next type is an entity that is associated with the device. The entity is not a physical device itself, but it's a software representation of that device's function. An entity will have a state that will tell you what the device is doing at that time. So when you add a device to Home Assistant, the device is often going to have one or more entities that are associated with it. For example, if you add a battery powered contact sensor to Home Assistant, that device may have two entities. It may have a sensor entity that tells you the battery percentage of the device, and then a binary sensor entity that tells you the state of the device, whether it's open or closed. When you add a light switch, for example, in the Home Assistant, you're gonna have a light or a switch entity, but you may also have a sensor if there's power monitoring available for that switch. Sometimes when you add a device, you're only gonna have a single entity that shows up, and sometimes you're gonna have many. Okay, so let's start with Zigbee. In Home Assistant, click Configuration, integrations and then click configure under the ZHA integration. Then in the bottom right corner, click add device. It'll show a message saying that it's searching for devices. Now you're gonna to need to put your Zigbee device into pairing mode. Typically there's a pairing button that you need to press multiple times or hold down for a certain amount of time in order for it to enter pairing mode. Sometimes like in the case of this smart remote, you need to remove a battery cover in order to access that button. In other cases, it's actually just a little pinhole that you gotta poke a paperclip or provided SIM card tool into. Typically the devices come with instructions on how to put it into pairing mode. Once you've successfully paired the device, the screen will change to show that the device has been paired. Here you have an opportunity to name the device. There are different best practices for naming devices, but I typically put the room name in the name of the device so I keep things straight. After this, you'll notice that there isn't any kind of save button, which is kind of weird to me, but after you navigate away from the page, you'll see that your changes were saved. To view the device details, click Configuration, Integrations, and then click Devices under the ZHA integration. Here it will show you a list of all your devices that are connected via the ZHA integration. Click the device that you just added to see the device info. Here you can see the model number and manufacturer if it's recognized by Home Assistant, as well as any entities that are associated with the device. You can always come back here if you need to, to see this information. This page also shows if there are any automations, scenes, or scripts that involve the device or its entities. Here you can also change the names and icons of the entities as well. All right, so now let's look at adding Z-Wave devices. This process is very similar to adding Zigbee devices, but there are a few key differences that you need to understand. Click Configuration, Integrations, and then click Configure under the Z-Wave JS integration. To add a device, click the Add Device button. Home Assistant is now in inclusion mode and will begin looking for your device. You need to put your device in the inclusion mode as well in order for your Z-Wave coordinator to recognize and pair with it. Again, every Z-Wave device is different, so you're gonna to need to consult the manual that comes with the device in order to know how to put it into inclusion mode. If your device supports S2 Advanced Security, Home Assistant recently started supporting this as well. So if S2 is enabled on your device, when you add it, it's gonna ask you for an authentication code. This code is typically found on the box or on the device itself. If you wanna skip S2 Security, 
You can do this by clicking Add Device and then clicking the Advanced Inclusion button in the window that pops up. In this new window, click the Insecure Radio button and then click Search Device. When the device is discovered, it begins the interview process. It might take some time to get fully set up and at this point, the new node won't be ready for use but will still show up in the number of devices on the Z-Wave JS configuration page. Once a device is added, click the View Device button and it will bring up the Device Info page. Once again, you can see some of the information you saw with Zigbee devices, including the entities that are associated with the device, automations, etc. If you want to see a list of all your Z-Wave devices, you can click Configuration, Integrations, and then click Devices under the Z-Wave JS integration. So that's pretty much it when it comes to adding Zigbee or Z-Wave devices. I should probably show you how to remove devices as well. It's a little different between ZHA and Z-Wave JS because with the Z-Wave devices, you have to put them into exclusion mode before you can unpair them with your Z-Wave coordinator. The first thing you're gonna to need to do before you remove Zigbee or Z-Wave devices is to press the subscribe button below this video. For Zigbee devices, just navigate to the device list, click the device you wanna remove from the list and click remove device in the bottom left corner. Click OK and the device is removed. It's that simple. For Z-Wave devices, you have to go to Configuration, Integrations, and then click Configure under the Z-Wave JS integration. Here you'll click Remove Device, and then you gotta put your device into exclusion mode following the instructions that come with the device. Once you've done that, Home Assistant will display a message that the device has been successfully removed, and that's it. Anyway, that's all I got for you in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did find it helpful, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. I do plan on making a part three of this video where I go over some basic add-ons that I recommend for Home Assistant beginners, and I'll try not to wait as long to do this part three as I did for part two. Also, I know some of you have been interested in my Loveless dashboards. If you guys would like to see a live stream where I go over how I set them up and how I make them look as good as I do, let me know in the comments. This would be a first live stream for me, so I'll have to get things figured out. You may have to bear with some technical difficulties, but it might be fun. Anyway, I really wanna thank you guys for all your support and for everyone who subscribed. If you're looking for another way to support the channel, there is a join button below this video that you can click to join the channel community. Anything I earn from these memberships, I will be using to directly support funding more projects for these videos, and I do plan on adding more benefits to these memberships in the future. Anyway, Thanks for watching, see ya.